Hey y'all, welcome in or welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about a new challenge I'm going to be focusing on this spring, one that I'm calling the No New Clothes Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be sharing what the challenge is, why I decided to do it, you know, what the goals and hopes for the challenge are, and then ultimately how you can join me too. We're going to get into it, and if you want to follow along with this challenge and have some inspiration, hear my thoughts on it over the next handful of months, then you should subscribe. So what's the challenge? For the entire spring season, April 1st to June 30th, I will not be buying any new clothes. And by that, I mean clothes that are in their first life. So any clothes that have had a previous owner are fine for me to purchase. And that includes thrift stores or like consignment shops, online apps, you know, like ThreadUp, Poshmark, those kinds of things. There's a couple of exceptions, which we'll talk about later on, but the goal is really either if I want slash need something, it's going to be buy from that venue or buy nothing. I actually started this challenge a little bit earlier than April 1st. I started on a weekend, March 22nd, and I was planning for this video a little bit ahead of time and realized that I really wanted to do an even 100 days and March 22nd is an even 100 days and it's going to be a 100 day challenge ultimately. So why the no new clothes challenge? And I'm going to be honest with y'all, I still shop fast fashion. Although I've done some exploration into the secondhand market and the sustainable clothing world, that portion of my wardrobe is around 30%. Currently it's 31.5% um, of my wardrobe is either secondhand or like sustainable firsthand. I have found really great brands over the last three to four years like Cezanne and Booty and Frank and Oak, from Rachel, Everlane, kind of. And these brands, it's it's great to know them, but they are generally too expensive to purchase from, you know, on a regular basis. I have found some great secondhand gems over the years. The pants I'm currently wearing got for free from a thrift swap, which is amazing. And they've quickly become like a most worn item in the fall, or I should say winter. But first-hand clothing and fast fashion clothing still represents the bulk of my wardrobe, right? That's about 70%. And I would ideally like it to be the opposite. 70 to 80% being from sustainably sourced ways and the other 20 to 30% you know, give myself wiggle room for not. So the fact that my wardrobe is at 30% is nice progress, but we can do better. And the reason why in this challenge we're going to focus on the secondhand market is because I feel like what has happened is I've developed this habit and I've kind of gotten stuck in this, yeah, in this habit where the firsthand sustainable clothes are too expensive. And then the secondhand market is kind of just like annoying to shop. And so then I just kind of go and do what I've always done. And it's really just a habit. Like I shop in the way that I shop. And while some of that has changed over the years, I shop how I shop. And I just haven't really been able to break up with fast fashion. And mostly it has to do with convenience and price. I've come to use fast fashion as like the crutch. And I've said over the years, like, I'll eventually do better. I'll eventually change how I shop in that respect. But eventually never comes or I'll go to the thrift store and I'll get frustrated and then I'll say, screw that. Or I'll shop on Poshmark and I can't find what I'm looking for and then I'll give up. Or I just know what that process is like and then I won't even, like, ugh, I'm not going to even go there. I think it's fair to give myself some grace because until the end of 2022, I was still working on shopping as, like just working on clothing, shopping in specific, trying to 
renegotiate my relationship with that. I had by that point transformed my shopping across the board and clothing was that last holdout category that needed some work. And so there is grace to give myself there, but 2022 ended over a year ago and I haven't really made efforts to to change anything. I now have the habits and skills I need in order to succeed. I also trust myself enough at this point to know when I'm making an excuse to shop or to shop in a way that I want versus something being a legitimate need. And so for me, this challenge is really about breaking a specific kind of habit. I'm not in the position where I'm like, oh, I'm over consuming, overspending, or like I'm unhappy with how much I'm shopping or how much money I'm spending. I want to be happier with where I'm spending my money is the ultimate change. I really want to live out my beliefs. And that's what a lot of this comes down to, to be honest. I want to live and embody my values in the kind of world that I want to see. I also have the power to influence people and I do in fact influence people if not on a daily basis, then maybe on a monthly basis or weekly basis. This is just another way, in my opinion, for me to take ownership over the fact that I have the power to influence people. I don't want to make a change because I I want to be performative or show how much I care, um, you know, simply because I have an audience. The fact that I do have an audience is quite a gift. It's a way that I can share my message and beliefs to the world and also like model what I consider best practices and like show somebody who is like going through the journey and it just adds another layer of importance in my opinion. I do want to say that a large part of the problem with consumerism is the fact that we are just buying too much stuff. Yes, where we buy stuff matters, but overall we are buying too much. We're buying stuff, we're not using it, and then we're throwing it away or even doing that in a really kind of quick succession. I'm not calling myself perfect and I feel like this video is a testament to that and how this is just one of the ways that I can change and be a better consumer. The entire mission of this channel is to help you stop shopping and find contentment with yourself, with your life, and with your stuff. I do think this challenge fits in with this mission of contentment um, in part because of <laughs> how I view shopping, which we were talking about last, kind of interesting, but also the fact that like I don't need to buy from specific stores or have my clothing, yeah, to have my clothing be from a specific store in order to love it. My clothing doesn't have to be new in order to love it. And the no new clothing challenge is a way for me to approach habit change in a way that's more fun. I initially spoke about this challenge in my weekly newsletter, which if you want to uh, get more content from me, um, or straight to your inbox, you can subscribe at shannarpart.com. And it was in writing that newsletter, I realized how negative my mindset was about changing this habit. Like I knew that I've had to change for a while. I've just been resistant and avoiding it because I was viewing this change as as a punishment. I talk about in terms of no bias that a lot of folks view their no bias as a punishment or budgets as punishment. And you know, I've said time and time again, since when is changing your shopping habits or saving money when has that become a punishment? It's not. It's a beautiful, wonderful thing. This is true in my case as well. And I wasn't fully aware of how much I was viewing it like a punishment. Not being able to shop freely or in the ways that I find the most satisfying or easy or convenient. I had been, I guess, assuming how not fun it would be, that it would just suck. It would yeah, it wouldn't be fun. It would suck. I would not like it. It would just be a frustrating or unwanted experience. Like I would just grit my teeth and bear it. And it's like, why would I want to change this aspect of my shopping if I feel like I just need to grit my teeth and bear it? That's, that's not going to entice anybody to do it. 
and I guess on a separate note, I am somebody who is aware of the problems with fast fashion, the problems of production, you know, who is making good clothing and the livable wage, but also like the destruction of our planet. Those are separate, but it's like one category of stuff. And then the other stuff is just how fast people accumulate their clothes. I know we were just talking about that, but there are some alarming stats out there that, you know, the average person, they wear their clothes seven to 10 times before they discard it. 10 uses is nothing. And that's like an average. We also own 60% more clothes now than we did 15 years ago, and we keep them only half as long. All, another stat, from the time of production, more than half of fast fashion pieces is disposed of in under a year. This is not just on the consumer's end. A lot of this does also have to do with like overproduction, so clothes being thrown out before they even make it to consumers. And only 1% one is actually recycled. And here's another one, approximately 87% of clothes produced by the fashion industry will end up in a landfill. 87%, 87%. Yes, we can cut down on our consumption, but we can also shop differently. I have known about the ills of fast fashion, but I haven't really done much about it. And this is me doing something about it. I just can't, I can't just sit and do nothing anymore. And so this is my way of taking what is ostensibly a really large change and scaling it back to something smaller that's more manageable, that can be grown over time. I have learned that I'm not a quitting cold turkey person and there's lots of science to suggest why that's the case for so many of us. But I should say, and if I say something like no new clothes for a year, that's a really big, really significant habit change that is very different from how I'm shopping now. It could be so big, it's overwhelming. And that's how I was looking at it previously. Like I was seeing it as all or nothing. I either change completely or not at all. So by framing this as a three month project, I get to work in the direction of my goal in a way that is sustainable, but also has a high likelihood of completion and continuation. So I, I get that habit change technique that I've been looking for and I also get a fun way to do it because I love a challenge and we've had many a challenge on this channel over the past um, four years. <laughs> yeah. And this is just a new one. And because I've framed it this way, I'm just like really excited about it. So the goals for this project, um, to buy no new clothes beyond the exceptions that I'll mention to wear the clothes I buy a hundred times. I won't know that if I buy something that I'll for sure wear it a hundred times, but I can use that as a metric to help me decide on what I purchase, if I purchase anything. And then, you know, I can track that to see if it does, you know, come to fruition, but I can still have that as a goal, even if it's a long-term one. Number three is to buy nothing if I can't find what I want secondhand. And really, I don't want this to turn into an excuse to shop. I do want to learn about new apps, websites, things like that, that you can buy secondhand items on. So, you know, I have more resources in the future, but also not just resources, but also ways to make buying secondhand more fun, enjoyable, perhaps even accessible. That is a goal, but I don't want this to turn into an excuse to shop. Like I need to buy stuff because I want to find these new things or get sucked into buying stuff from these new things because they're exciting. So even though this is a no new clothes challenge, I don't want to fall into the trap of shopping, like buying a lot of secondhand stuff or like feeling okay about it because it's secondhand. I also want to, you know, have joy in my wardrobe and the clothes I bring in regardless of where they're from. 
What I mean by that is I want to enjoy the act of getting dressed and enjoy and appreciate the clothes that I have. I don't want to value something less because it was thrifted. I don't want to feel okay about buying something, wearing it twice. Like no big deal was thrifted. I don't want my my personal wardrobe to become a revolving door. That might be a little bit different if I was doing, let's say, a lot of thrift swaps where you're not actually buying anything. For me, it becomes a problem when you're spending your money on it because you're buying stuff that you ordinarily wouldn't and you're spending money that you ordinarily wouldn't. And again, this can devolve into not being critical and feeling okay because it's secondhand. I want to continue that critical thinking um, despite where I get it from. So this challenge, as I mentioned, is going to go to June 30th and we're going to do a bit of a halfway update. So I'll let you know how it's going and I'll let you know how I'm feeling about it, how difficult or easy it has been if I bought any clothes, uh, whether new or secondhand, and, you know, kind of talk about the process or the experience. If you've been here since the no buy days of 2020, it's going to be like that, but it's just going to be one update. And if I continue past June, then I'll let you know and, you know, we'll sort something out um, going forward. So I want to talk a bit about the exceptions. So I'm allowing myself three exceptions for this quarter. And I'm just thinking about this quarter as an individual entity. I'm pretending the rest of the year doesn't exist. So my exceptions are shoes, undergarments, and bathing suits. Now, undergarments and bathing suits, in my opinion, are a bit self-explanatory. Undergarments, you can find some online that are brand new with tags. Or not just online at thrift stores and stuff like that. Um, and I think where appropriate, I could look for that. As an example, there's a chance I'm going to have to replace at least one sports bra this quarter. I say a chance. There's one that's on its last legs and I don't know how long those are gonna last it could play out where i'm able to find a brand new with tag sports bra i know the exact one i want i know my size but for other things like traditional bras or underwear we're not we're not going to go there which i think is very fair also for bathing suits i decided at the end of 2023 like that summer season that i put off buying a bathing suit last year so i could do it this year um, so I do intend to buy a bathing suit this year. I have a two piece and a one piece. I have explicit intentions of replacing the two piece. I don't know if the one piece is going to come this year. We'll, we'll see. Um, so with bathing suits, I will not buy a bathing suit that I cannot try on. So that basically negates the entire secondhand market. Again, something that I think is fair. I could, you know, go and uh, buy from a sustainable brand. I could check that out and, you know, see what return policies are like or things like that. Or if I'm able to physically go to a secondhand store, or try it on, um, I can entertain those options if and when I get there. And then last for shoes, there's lots of shoes available on the secondhand market. And I am, I have bought secondhand shoes before. And I'm okay doing so if the shoes haven't been worn or like very, very minimal wear. I will go to check the shoes first on secondhand markets. That I'm perfectly like happy and capable to do and something that I do now. But if I don't find that thing uh, secondhand, I will buy it new. Shoes are one of those things that like they're molded to a person's feet. I don't want to, you know, buy a shoe that's been like heavily molded to somebody else's foot. So I think the shoes could go either way. Like there probably would be, like if I were to do this long term, there probably would be a good chunk that I could buy secondhand, but also a good chunk that I wouldn't. One that I'm kind of up in the air about how I want to handle are a pair of uh, Converse. I am, the or the plan was to buy some in spring. Um, I haven't been able to find any on the secondhand market yet, not just Converse. I want the platform pink Converse. Those are the ones that I've decided. I tried them on in person 
And I took photos and went home, you know, waited, realized, yes, these are the ones I want to buy. I'm going to continue scoping out the secondhand market. Will some eventually come on? Maybe. I have no idea. If they don't, will I just go out and buy my Converse or will I wait it out? Because are they a need? No. They're a want. They're something I truly believe I'll wear, get my hundred plus uses out of them, you know, have a lot of fun with them this spring season, but they are not a need. So this is an interesting one that I haven't decided what to do with yet. And that's also, this was the, um, the item I had in mind with this category. So those are the exceptions. And if anything else comes up, we'll take it as we go. I am a firm believer in not like overthinking the rules. I looked ahead to see what is a conceivable purchase over the next three months. These are all conceivable purchases and we'll go from there. You know, you can't foresee, you can't foresee everything. So that's the challenge. I would love if you would join me for the next three months to purchase no new clothes. If you want to go on a true blue clothing no buy, I think now would be a fabulous time to try it out, whether that's one month or three months. And let me know in the comments if you are going to be joining me. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I appreciate you. And thanks for watching this video. I would really love it if you would subscribe to catch this challenge as we proceed in real time. And I hope to see you again around here soon.